Good morning, Creative Mornings. <laughs> we are very excited that you're here with us and hanging out. I hope that you have your delicious cup of coffee or tea like myself here that was way too hot and I just took a big gulp before we started so I won't taste anything else today, which is totally cool. We'd like to welcome you to our live stream. Thank you for hanging out uh, for a few minutes while we figured life out on the internet. <laughs> I'm Ashley with Creative Mornings, and if you haven't done Creative Mornings before, it's a free breakfast lecture series for the creative community. So every month there's a topic. We meet up usually at Drucker Brew Halla, but today we are meeting up live in the comfort of your own home, and so we welcome you here. Um, we're excited that you're here and going to hang out with us for a while. And so today we're considering it a bonus Creative Mornings. Um, we have Randy Kay here with us, who I'll be introducing in just a few minutes. We're going to do some meditation, some stretches, things that we think are really important to help you um, take care of yourself in this time and to kind of motivate you to get creative again. Um, and then we'll be doing, we won't be doing a formal Q&A um, with our video link that we needed to fix right now. We need to do it in a different format. And so if you have a question, that Randy Kay and I can answer for you after she is done today. You should Facebook message Creative Mornings Fargo's page, <laughs> and we will take those questions through that. Um, and then after that, at 9 a.m., or probably a little bit after, as we get started um, a little bit later, we're going to have Ashley Rick of Tinker is going to lead us through some hand lettering basics. And that is your creative make and take, which we usually do at the end of these. And so if you'd like to do that, you can find um, a couple hand lettering pages we just posted to print off. Otherwise, just have a pencil and paper ready, and we will do that as well. And so if you've ever been to our creative mornings before, we always start out with our traditional coffee cup yoga. <laughs> so everybody who is on right now literally needs to stand up with us. We want to know and feel like you're participating. And we're going to have Livewire come on in and be our coffee cup modifier today. And so you need to have a coffee cup in your hand. And if you're like super not into this right now, then follow Livewire here with us today. <laughs> They'll be our awesome modifier. And if you're like, this is ridiculous, just follow him. It's super great. And so you're going to take your coffee cup. You're going to stand. You're going to have your feet hip distance apart. <laughs> you're just going to bend from your waist, have a slight bend in your knees. And you're going to bend nice and down. Let your head hang low. Balance your coffee cup out. If you're like, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to keep sitting down. Then follow our modifier right next to me. That would be great. Shake your head yes. Nod your head no. <laughs> or do the opposite of those words. This is how you feel when you're the morning zombie and you have not had any of your coffee yet today. Hang it nice and low, release from your waist, have that slight bend in your knees, feel the goodness. And then with both hands on your coffee cup, you're gonna reach all the way up, all the way up with both hands, go on your tippy toes for a minute, shake a little bit if you need to. <laughs> this is the rise and grind after you've had that first delicious cup of coffee. And if you're still like, this is a terrible idea, why am I doing this? Follow our modifier. And then go back down, have your coffee cup kind of at your waist. Step one foot out, a little further apart, a little further than your shoulders. And we're going to do the Lion King coffee cup. And so you're going to bring your coffee cup with both hands up. And you're going to stretch across your body and present your coffee cup to the world, maybe to your right. Try to keep your hips forward to get that nice stretch across your body or keep following your modifier. And then you're going to stretch your coffee cup to the left or the opposite way. <laughs> stretch it out or follow our modifier. <laughs> and then we're going to do the Thunder Coffee Sun Salutation virtually. And so I'd like you all, even from the comfort of your own home, to go ahead and give me a cheers virtually. We're not touching anything physically <laughs> to say this is going to be a really good morning. And we're going to thank our coffee cup modifier for the day. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, and so as some of you know, we have some really amazing sponsors with Creative Mornings. And there are still amazing ways you can support them. And so at Drecker Brewing Company, you can still buy their off-sale beer by going into their tap room. Follow their Facebook page for that. Because you know we all need beer right now. Thunder Coffee is still open uh, 8 to 4, Monday through Saturday, 9 to 3 on Sunday. You can go through their new brand spanking new drive-thru. 
Um, they're also selling craft kits from us and Tinker uh, through their drive through as well as beer. And they'll be posting another yoga session on Saturday morning tomorrow at 7 a.m. They're selling shirts from Fargo, and Dex is roasting coffee beans. You can also reach out to Livewire if you have groups that need to meet virtually and you're having any things that you need help with with that, um, especially larger groups, they can help facilitate that with you as well. And so, we would like to welcome our speaker, bonus person today. Uh, Randy Kay is going to join us. She does Naturally Randy Kay. You can find her on the internet. She does the Simple Self-Care podcast, which is incredible. You can be listening to that right now too, as well um, as you're at home. Um, and she's going to be leading us through some meditation, some stretching, and some breath work, um, which we really hope you'll take some time for to actively participate with us. Um, and let's give a virtual round of applause to Randy Kay. Woo! Yeah, thank Yay. you for the applause. <laughs> Hey, welcome, Randy. All right. Thanks, Ashley. Um, all right, cool. Hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I just want to take some time with you today to do some calming down. Um, it's a weird time for everybody. It's been a messy couple of weeks of us trying to figure out some sort of new, hopefully temporary normal, um, new routines. There's new stressors, that things we haven't thought about, or maybe our current stressors have been amplified. Um, and so I want to take today to just teach you how you can find some calm and find uh, to come home to yourself, that you can use your own body as a way to calm some of the chaos and as like a safe space. So, um, so how we do that are through some really simple practices that can trigger uh, the parasympathetic nervous system or the rest and relax nervous system. So we want to calm down the stress response so we can signal to the brain that it is safe. Um, if you're like a lot of us the past few weeks, we've been like this. We've been checking the news, we've been checking our phones, we've been running around um, in our homes, <laughs> so we're not getting a lot of energy out. Um, if you have children at home, that's a new adventure. And so, um, so what these practices do is they just like hit the refresh button. They just take us from here. And if we take a nice deep breath, it can be like, oh, I'm like this. And so we can then instantly calm down and move forward from a different space. So instead of layering on the stress um, and like up leveling all the stress in our body, we can layer by layer start to take it down. Sound good? <laughs> Sound good. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a practice. The, all of these things are a practice. All of these things are a way that we can keep deepening our relationship with ourselves. So before we get into some of these practices, I just want to take a moment to um, define some terms for you because self-care and meditation and mindfulness and Everyone's telling you to calm down right now, and you're like, I can't calm down right now. <laughs> you know, like all these things seem like good ideas, but they can be kind of fluffy. Um, even before this phase of life, it these words have kind of become buzzwordy. So I want to take a moment to just share with you, share with you what they mean and how they can actually be applied to your life right now. So the term self-care. Uh, self-care is my jam. It's what I talk and teach a lot about. Um, but I define it as the act of tuning into your true self and then acting accordingly. So it's not necessarily what you're doing. It's how you're doing it. And it's things that get you to check into yourself instead of check out. So that can include some of these floofier things like bubble baths and massages and yoga and all these wonderful things. But if you're doing them to check out, they're not really self-care. So they can fit under the umbrella, but only if they're a gateway into checking in with how you're actually doing. And so when I talk about self-care and you hear people promoting self-care, think about how throughout my day can I be checking in to myself, hearing what I need, and then honoring that in some way. Even if right now it's not going to be your ideal self-care routine, how can we honor it in a way that um, we're showing up for ourselves still and filling ourselves up? The other term is mindfulness. Mindfulness is a very, very simple idea. Um, it's a very simple practice 
uh, but it can be really challenging to do. And what makes something mindful is that you are bringing awareness. You're doing something on purpose um, with an awareness to it. And then you're practicing that from moment to moment with non-judgment. So you're using compassion. So breathwork is an example of that. But you can be mindful while you do your dishes. Um, you can be tuning into what you're doing moment to moment as this um, observer of how you're doing, how your breath is, how, what thoughts are going through your head. So mindfulness walking is really great, um, but it's just a way of bringing some intention to what you're doing so you're not just going on autopilot all the time. And that has shown to calm down the brain as well and calm down the body. We can actually bring awareness to something that you're doing. And then meditation. A lot of times when we think of meditation, we think of you know, sitting in this cross-legged position, trying to reach enlightenment. And a lot of us are like, ah, oh, that's not for me. Uh, <laughs> and it can be uncomfortable sitting like that for a lot of us. And so really what meditation is, again, very similar to mindfulness. They go together. Um, but it is, again, bringing awareness to something for a period of time. So you're doing something like a repetitive action or some sort of guided imagery or breath work for a period of time, practicing that non-judgment or that compassion as well. And so again, you can turn so many different things into a meditation. And what I'm going to teach you is just some really simple practices that you can turn into a meditation and you can be meditating while you're going throughout your day. So bringing it back to the concept of self-care is how we can be kind of sprinkling these acts into our day to help calm the nervous system down, to help calm down the stress response. And when we're in such a high vibration right now, any little thing we can do is going to go a long way. And so um, we can find these pockets of time to focus on our breath um, and to give a little gift to ourselves so we can show up in all the ways that we need to show up right now and we can kind of clear out all the unnecessary gobbledygook also <laughs> that's floating around in our minds and on the news and we can start to feel grounded within. Okay, if you have any questions on that, please message um, Ashley on Facebook through the Creative Mornings Fargo page and I can answer any of that. I'm going through this really quickly, um, but hopefully there's some nuggets in there that you can um, start applying and just understanding that how simple these practices are and that you can start with where you are, where you are, start with your current situation and make your current situation just a little bit more therapeutic um, and caring for yourself and then you can always build upon that. The simpler, the better. Um, the shortest amount of time you can practice, the better, because that's where it can start to grow and become sustainable. Okay, cool. Uh, <laughs> so I didn't even need my notes, so we're gonna just throw those to the side. Um, and let's do some practices, because this is, this is where it's at. And now I forgot my practice, no, just kidding. Okay, <laughs> um, we're gonna start with the very uh, basic breath work. So breathing, we are technically, hopefully, already breathing. Um, and so why not make it therapeutic? For a lot of us, um, we've trained our bodies to breathe in a stressful way. So we're breathing here in the chest and neck. And um, I'll be doing stuff with my hands, so sorry if I bump the microphone. Um, but, it, uh, but just go ahead and place your hands on your neck here and take a deep breath in the chest and neck and feel how these muscles tense up. And so we're constantly tensing up these little friend <laughs> muscles here that aren't meant to be our main breathers. Anatomically, our main breathers are meant these beautiful abdominal muscles down here. Um, but because of our posture, because of all sorts of things, we've disengaged these muscles. So when we bring the breath back down, it is how we are meant to be breathing. And it does signal to the body that it can start calming down. It's a very therapeutic healing breath. And so that's what we're going to start with right now. So please follow along uh, wherever you're at. And you can place your hand on the belly and place a hand on the chest. And just take a deep breath. 
just wherever you're at. And notice what hands are moving. Now, you want to make sure, you want to shift it a little bit if you need to, where the hand on the chest is the one that is staying calm. It's not really moving too much. But the hands on the belly are the ones that are moving, or the hand on the belly. So we are going to take an inhale and let that hand expand out like you're filling up a balloon. And then you're going to exhale. The hand's going to come down. So it might feel a little awkward, um, but that's OK. It's a practice, right? So again, taking some nice deep breaths here, letting you can put both the hands on the belly if you like. You don't need to use your hands at all if you don't want to. But you're allowing the belly to free itself, to open up and expand. And just notice how that feels. A lot of times it's just like, I don't know, it's a game changer. It can just instantly like change the energy. And whenever I do this in groups, it's like the whole vibe of the room changes. So. Go ahead and keep doing that nice, slow belly breath. Notice how it feels. And again, we're practicing with non-judgment or some self-compassion. And so if things are, if you're more tense than you thought you were, that's just information. There's nothing wrong. We're all kind of like that right now. And so we're just taking in information so we know what to do, so we know what we're needing. There's no right or wrong here with how you're supposed to be. So keep that breath going. And as you breathe, you can use that to just loosen up your shoulders. And if you want to just wiggle the spine a little bit, we want to free up some physical tension. One of the great things about yoga and movement is that when you can free up some physical tension, then you, have, you can have more access to some deeper layers of yourself. And so that's kind of the point of yoga. <laughs> so we're just going to keep moving and grooving. I feel really cool doing this alone on a stage. <laughs> and I hope you guys are following along. Ashley is in the corner making me feel safe and <laughs> not alone. Um, <laughs> but continue to belly breathe. OK. So now that we have that going, we are going to focus our breath a little bit more. So. Another aspect of meditation is to add repetition, something that can be kind of a nice counter or a beat. And what this does, there's a lot of benefits to that, but it can help distract the brain and so the rest of the body can calm down. So we're going to do something very simple called the equal part breath, where we're going to inhale the same amount of counts as we exhale. So, And if you're watching along and you're um, seated, and your back's starting to hurt, you can lay down. Like You can do whatever makes you feel the most comfortable. When we're holding tension and we're not in a comfortable position, then our bodies are focused on that tension. So do what you need to do to feel comfortable. OK, so we're coming back to our belly breath. And, we're, and I'll guide you, and you'll get the hang of it as we go. But go ahead and exhale all the air out. And then we're going to inhale, count of three. So inhale, one, two, three, and exhale, one, two, three. And inhale, one, two, three, and exhale, one, two, three. One more time, inhale, one, two, three, and exhale, one, two, three, and then come back to your natural breath. <sighs> Pretty simple, right? But notice how that breath made you feel. And on your own time, you can do different counts. You know, you can increase your counts each time. Um, but the main point is to have it be the same amount as inhale as exhale. And this counting can be really calming. If you're feeling a lot of anxiety, if you need to calm down in a pinch, this can be a nice exercise to do. Or when you're trying to fall asleep at night, your mind is racing, the counting can be a really nice thing to um, just start to calm down that mental chatter. And then you're just coming back to your normal breath, get inviting that belly breath, making that feel more normal. OK, so the next uh, thing I want to teach you 
<laughs> is um, another, it's kind of like a, a phrase that you can tell yourself. And it's an I am meditation. And so this can be helpful when a lot of times when we are stressed out and feeling anxious, we can start feeling anxious because we feel anxious. <laughs> and we can be like, stop being stressed. And like that's how we're telling our bodies to not be stressed. Um, and so we want to flip that script a little bit and, and bring in something positive um, and, and invite ourselves to calm down in a different way. And so this is a really beautiful meditation, very simple, that I've been doing the past few weeks. Um, and you can fill in the blank with whatever, but on the inhale, we say, I am. And on the exhale, we say, at peace for example. That's the one I'll be using for this example. But you can fill that in with whatever you're needing. I am at home. I am confident. I am calm. Um, but right now, I feel like at peace is just something we're all needing. Um, but again, use what you want to. So we're going to inhale. And we can think it or we can say it. So inhale, I am. And exhale, at peace. Inhale, I am, and exhale, at peace. And keep going with that on your own breath. These hand movements are your inhale <laughs> and your exhale. And keep filling in the blank with what you're needing. So another way to do that, you're still breathing here, see my hands, <laughs> is you can use this as a walking meditation. So with each step, I am the next step at peace. Walking meditation is one of my favorite things to do. Um, but the key with a walking meditation is that you just want to have a set distance and you're not just wandering around. Okay, a few more breaths. I am at peace. One more time. I am at peace. And then return back to your normal breath and see how that feels. See how that feels in your body. See how that feels in your mind. And then we'll just return back to our normal breath here. And I just want to lead you through more of a guided meditation. So you can continue with whatever breathing pattern you like. Um, but I want to now take this time to tune into how we're doing and how we're feeling right now. So now that we've kind of created some space with the breath, then we can again access some of these deeper layers. And so continue your breathing. You can close your eyes if you want to. But start to do like a full body scan from head to toe, just checking in. How did these simple practices influence you? Were they like hitting the refresh button? Did they skim just a little bit, just a little layer off the top of the stress going on? Or if it was really challenging for you to do these, that is important information. Sometimes we think when we are having a hard time calming down or doing self-care or we can't do a yoga posture or whatever, that that's a bad thing. It's not. It's information. So if it was really hard for you to calm down and to focus, what's up with that? You get to get curious with what is coming up for you. Again, no judgment, self-compassion. Okay, so now check into the quality of your mind. Now that you've checked into some physical tension, maybe let some things go. We won't do too much stretching today, but again, if you need to wiggle or shake some things out, that can feel really good. And that's actually been proven as a way to process trauma and stress, is to just shake and move. So if you need to dance it out, that also helps. But keep checking into how you're doing, what you're feeling, what thoughts are coming up. 
And as we continue to journey with ourselves, think about if you could put a word or a phrase to how you've been feeling the past few weeks or even the past few days, what would that be? How would you describe it? Again, just a word or a phrase. Or if you're more of a visual person, does it have like a color or just like a more tactile feeling? And again, we're just noticing, we're just becoming present with what is. When we pretend, when we ignore with what is, we can't move through it. The only way is to get really present with it. The only way out is through. <laughs> so bring your awareness to that. And then think about what would serve you right now. So what would be like a very nurturing, opposing energy to that? What words, what phrases, what color, what feeling? And just, again, you're not thinking too hard about this. You're just trusting what you hear. And if you're not feeling anything, just keep breathing. Just keep giving yourself what you need. So now that you have these opposing energies, see if you can tune into that positive one, what you're needing. And you can visualize that. I like to visualize it with my breath. So on the inhale, I'm cultivating what I need. And on the exhale, I'm sending that through my body. So you can visualize that maybe if it's like a warm light that's coming and just flooding over if you're feeling maybe like a darkness. So I know I'm getting kind of out there, but <laughs> I do this on my own. And I've done this with a lot of clients and I found it helpful. So just go with it, experiment with it, take it or leave it. If it's coming up as something different for you, just go with it. But see if you can keep bringing in what you need. You can do this through this guided meditation, inhaling, create, like inhale cultivates the resources and exhale sends it through. And you can use your exhale to release what you don't need anymore, what isn't serving you. Again, it's that concept of self-care in general, is being able to give yourself what you need from moment to moment, from day to day. And some days, it's taking a shower, and that's your victory. <laughs> that's your self-care for the day. Other days, it's taking a half a day off or going. Yesterday, I went for a walk by myself without my dogs or without anybody. I just wanted to be by myself. So it's the, the best practices are the simplest ones. When we overcomplicate things, that's when um, it distract us, distracts us from the true healing that we need. So you can continue that visualization, inhaling what you need, and exhaling, sending it through. We'll do that just a few more times. And then I just want to end these practices staying in this meditative state, staying with your breath. I invite you to put your hands over your heart and breathe into your heart space. Check into the quality of your heart space right now. Does it feel heavy? Does it feel full? Does it feel empty? Does it feel tight? Does it feel open? And again, give yourself what you need here. Send some gratitude to your heart space. Think about, despite what all is going on in the world, what you have that you can treasure. What unexpected gifts or moments are happening during this time? And I'm guessing if you're watching this and participating, you have a healthy body, 
and you have the time to do something like this, and that's incredible. So take some time to notice the gifts in your life, how your body is showing up for you, how it's still moving you forward, and how we're getting through this together. We're all going through, we're all being tested right now. And there's going to be a lot of healing that needs to be done on the other side of this. So when we can use these practices, we're creating a foundation of having an intimate relationship with ourselves. So when you hear people in the media being like, slow down, calm down, use this time to care for yourself. If you're able, if you have some pockets of time, or maybe even as a family, you can be doing some of these healing practices together. Like you're creating the substance that you need to get through this. This isn't some luxury to have this relationship with yourself. It's a necessity if we're going to get through this and get on the other side of this and learn from it and be better from it. Okay. Take a few more deep breaths. Again, if any questions are coming up for you, please send them along or reach out to me privately. I'm at home right now, so I'd love to hear from you. <laughs> Community is, I love community, and I'm missing that a lot, so feel free to reach out. But take a few more deep breaths. Come back to the room. Come back to your body. You can, you can stand up for a moment before Ashley comes back in, so we'll do a little bit of stretching. So you can stand up or stay seated, but we're just going to shake some things out, move the hips around, do some... I call this move, I do this in my yoga classes all the time, the Julie Andrews from Sound of Music. You gotta be a theater nerd to get that one. Um, <laughs> or the um, fat man in the little coat. If you don't get any of those references, you're a hip young person. <laughs> but it's good to just move the arms, sway the body, get out of this position, shake it out. Okay, I just did guns. Um, so, Ashley, why don't you come back up and join me? And um, I'd love to hear, even if you don't have a question, how you're feeling, how this helped, um, whatever. We just want to hear from you. Yes. Thank you, Randy. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, we really appreciated that. That was very nice. Good. I feel more like... <laughs> loose, but in an appropriate way, yeah. <laughs> I think. You're, you're a loose woman <laughs> yeah. in a therapeutic way. <laughs> yes. um, so as you guys, if you are watching right now, you would see that you're not currently on Facebook Live with us. And so um, <clears throat> if you do have questions, we can take them. We would just have you send them in the next minute <laughs> <laughs> to our Creative Mornings Facebook page uh, through Messenger so we can actually see it for sure. Um, if you have any questions for Randy related to breath work, meditation, uh, self-care during these times. Um, if you want to ask me about my dog, um, <laughs> <laughs> we can answer some of that stuff for you. And then we'll be diving into our um, hand lettering, make and take craft in just a few minutes too. Um, and so Randy, mm -hmm. I didn't really prep you for this at all, but okay. our theme was identity. Oh, interesting. <laughs> I could have told you that ahead of time, and I, it's been crazy. It's so. okay. Um, and I feel like uh, during this time, it's, it's really easy when you're at home and in a totally different routine um, to kind of lose that sense of self mm. um, or identity when you're not going to your workplace, you're not seeing your friends that you see on a daily basis. Um, and if you are working, like you, you're, it's probably a different type of work. I talked mm -hmm. to somebody yesterday who normally does the features section of the forum and now she's doing digital news reporting instead and just like talking about how different that changes within her job even. Mm -hmm. um, and so do you have any <laughs> recommendations of how people can either use what we talked about today um, or other things to kind of maintain that sense of identity through this moment in time that we're in? Yeah, I've been thinking about that a lot actually of just identity and how and the things we use to define ourselves because a lot of those things are being taken away or put on pause mm -hmm. like even with my own 
business, like day to day, I do body work and teach yoga and I'm not able to do that right now. Mm -hmm. And um, that's how I've defined myself as bringing the most value to the world. And now yeah. I'm like, okay, WTF, like <laughs> how is it gonna right. look? Am I, can I be the person who shows up online and like pivots my business and like mm -hmm. all of these things. So I know for a lot of us who are business owners who have our identity like with our brick and mortar locations, mm -hmm. um, it's just this whole like, I've never thought of myself as X, Y, Z, you know? And I think there's a lot of people doing that in their own way of like, well, I've never thought of myself as being introverted, for example, yeah. or that I can enjoy that. Mm -hmm. Or if people, parents have kids at home, I never thought that I could do homeschooling or I don't know what I'm doing. And so a lot of us are just like, we've gotten, mm -hmm. we get safety in our identity and yeah, <laughs> it, right. com it comforts us, but it can also hold us back. And so one thing I'm trying to explore is that concept of like, what are these other facets of myself? And is there mm -hmm. a part of my identity that I want to bring forward that I didn't think I could before? Yeah. Um, and are there parts of my identity that I actually want to let go of because I don't have to be that right now? Like I don't have to be healing everyone in person right yeah. now, you know? And that kind of feels nice, like yeah. sometimes, you know? So it's it's one of those like free for alls. Yeah. And I think the ability to stay flexible and fluid and open to a new reality and a new um, appreciation of who we are is going to help us the most yeah. instead of being like, but no, I'm like this. But no, I never fill in the blank and be like, well, what if? Like, yeah. wouldn't it be crazy <laughs> if I was like X, Y, Z, you know? And so... I don't know if that answers your question, but <laughs> no. it's just an interesting theme for right now where mm -hmm. our identities are getting challenged yeah. and we want to hold on to our routines and our normal way of operating. And I get comfort in the fact that nobody has it figured out right now. <laughs> yes. Like there's been times in my life where I, I felt similar like chaos in certain ways. And I was just like, well, this is my problem. I have to figure it out. But, like, this is everybody's problem, and we're all in this boat. Yeah, <laughs> And <right. laughs> um, so we get to be gentle with ourselves, and we get to practice that self-compassion. And here's the, the beauty of these simple practices, is what you can do on a micro level is what you can do on a macro level. And so when you can take the time to be fluid with your self-care and um, modify that and, and tune into these other parts of yourself, then that can start to amplify into how you operate mm -hmm. your business and your family life and everything else. And our identities get to um, get shaken up, which I think is a good thing to do every once in a while. Yeah. That so was anyway, it was a tangent for you, but oh, no. hopefully it's helpful. <laughs> Having grace with yourself, especially in yeah. this time is mm -hmm. big. And with the people around you too, who are going through the same thing, I think is yes. hard, but necessary, right? Like, yeah. We're all that's in it together. Part of why I, I, we were talking before this how social media has been such a gift right now mm -hmm. because we're connecting in more authentic ways um, and people are posting more mindfully. Um, but then there's also people that are using this opportunity to be even more <laughs> judgmental of how we're all handling it. Sure. And so um, I've had to take a break recently because I'm a highly sensitive person and yeah. I take into consideration so many people's feelings. <laughs> So when I hear when I see a judgment post, I'm like, oh my gosh, am I doing that? And like, you know, and I, you know, it, which is good, but it's also like, yeah, you know, balance. And yeah. so I think um, being gentle towards other people, knowing that they're just trying to figure it out too right now, is a really good point. Yeah, I do have a question from Nick. It says, how do you bring meditation and relaxation techniques into an office environment when it can be difficult to find a quiet, safe space? Mm. Yes, that is a good question. Mm -hmm. The more, a couple of things, the more you practice at home or in your own space, the easier it is going to be for you to bring these things into every environment. So the first thing would be to cultivate some of these practices in a place where you feel like you can and really explore it and deepen those practices because then you can modify them for any situation that you're in. So when you're at work, 
Um, it depends on your work situation. Um, but I always encourage people to find their safe space at work. So whether that's a bathroom stall or <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> underneath their desk or, <laughs> you know, whatever, their car. Um, and have that planned out in advance so when you need some time, you can go to that mm. space. You don't find that space when you're in panic mode. <laughs> mm. um, or maybe you did, uh, and now you can go back to it when you need to. Um, and, and then that's what I mean about breath work. Like, breath work is your gateway to yourself and to mm -hmm. making something a mindful mm -hmm. practice. And so you can be sitting at your desk, and there can be stress going on around you, but you can come to your belly breath. You can do the equal part breath that we did. Um, you can journal it out privately. You can be on your phone or your computer with the notes mm -hmm. at up and get your thoughts out, <laughs> you know, or you can just type, I am at peace, I am at peace, <laughs> I am like over and over. And you just find these things that work for you in your own practice that you can then bring in to a work environment. And you can also invite others to do it with you. A lot of times we all are craving something like that. And so I do have a student who um, invented something called Roga, where at like 2.15 every day, um, people would get up from their desks in their row and they would do yoga together. And she started initiating that and it became this office-wide cool. sensation. And then she got, and then she got sick of doing it. <laughs> but people would get mad at her for not doing it. <laughs> and so like, and then it became this, like they were keeping her accountable and That's cool. it became this fun thing that everybody does. Um, and so you can change the culture around you you can be a, a force for good. And so you can invite your coworkers to go on a walk um, for your meeting or, um, you know, things like that. So it really is not having these grand expectations and trusting the simplicity of bringing the stuff into your, what you're currently doing. You don't need this perfect setting, mm -hmm. Zen setting to do this stuff. And in fact, um, that's rare when you can actually do that. So the more you can practice that in more chaotic settings, the more um, beneficial it's going to be for you. So, yeah. yeah. And I feel like a lot of people are on their like, I'm uh, just in talking to people who've done curbside pickup at our shop and that kind of thing. Uh, they've mentioned like, I had a panic attack last night and it just took one little thing mm. to set you off. When you haven't ever normally had that kind of emotion ba from whether, whether it's the news or some other just thing at home or whatever else, they, like people <laughs> seem like a lot of times in this moment that they're on their last string in, mm -hmm. and don't realize it a lot of times. And I think what I was going to ask you a question on that, but you basically <laughs> answered it. But it's like starting this practice now mm -hmm. um, will help you in those moments to like go to that moment of doing breath work or yeah. when people feel that panic, how they can use it. Yeah, panic attacks and even even like your back goes out or something like those never come out of the blue they're always brewing for a while mm -hmm. and so that's another reason why these practices however they look for you um, are so important is because you are preventing these things from getting to the point of breaking mm -hmm. um, and so a lot of times like we there's all these shoulds right like i should exercise i should eat well i should meditate, I should, blah, 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 blah. And that puts this kind of negative blanket over all this good stuff. But when you can think of why you should and why you actually need to and what you're preventing in your life, that is a much more inspiring thing than mm -hmm. just being like, oh, I got to take care of myself or yes. <laughs> whatever. Like you're doing this stuff to help prevent panic attacks, to help prevent um, chronic body pain, to help, you know, and and I'll say another thing about a panic attack, because um, I've experienced those in my life too. Um, and that's, I mean, my mental health is how I started getting into all this stuff in the first place. Um, is that once you're in the thick of it, like once you have a panic attack, like I said, like we can spiral mm -hmm. and we can start feeling anxious that we can't calm down the anxiety. And so when it happens, just ride the train, you know, like just ride that train. Calm yourself down as best you can. Do some breathing if you can. But then once it's over, like take the pressure off trying to snap out of it, but just ride it. And then once it's over, get curious with why that happened. What was the perfect recipe of things 
that triggered it? And what can you start implementing into your life when you're feeling better that can serve you? I think when we get in these moments, it's just such a perfect storm for judgment and feeling mm. bad about ourselves and trying to forcibly stop it. Yeah. And that's just not wise and not that possible. Um, and so be gentle with that stuff and, um, and start to fill yourself up on a daily basis with these practices to help you get through. And you're still gonna have stress, you're still gonna have hard times, you're still gonna have breakdowns, but you have some reserves and you have a foundation for you to, to build from. Well, thank you. Thank yeah. you for being here today with us. <laughs> it's a nice change of pace. Yeah, right. <laughs> I did shower today, and that was my victory. <laughs> uh, so I guess my last question for you before we get close to going into our make and take time um, is just how can we keep connecting with you? Yes, well. <laughs> all the ways upcoming all the way. here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so right now, I've been trying to figure out how to show up best on social media and serve and keep my business going without um, being in person. Yeah. Um, and I've just been really gentle with myself and not launched anything too crazy. Um, but I, I produce a podcast every week, so I just decided I'm going to keep doing that for now. So I have the Simple Self-Care podcast you can listen to on iTunes, SoundCloud, um, wherever you listen to your podcast, I am there. Um, and last week's episode and this week's episode um, is about self-care or caring for yourself in times of crisis. Um, and um, this week is uh, an interview that's specific to the COVID-19 situation. Um, so those are going to be relevant to right now. Mm -hmm. And the ones moving forward are going to be more. I pre-recorded some. And yeah. self-care is applicable all the yes. time. So <laughs> we're just going to keep going with it. Um, so that's that. On Instagram is where I show up the most on social media. And that's naturally Randy K. And that's my website as well, naturallyrandyk.com. And I will be doing more um, Facebook and Instagram lives and, and things like that. Um, I am coming up with a way to um, work one-on-one -on -one with people where if you have chronic pain and you're not able to get into somebody, we can have a virtual session and I can teach you how to treat it um, with yoga, with some self-care techniques. Um, so if that's you, let me know. But And then hopefully when this all clears up, you can join me at my studio in yes. Fargo if you're in Fargo. <laughs> so. And we've had you um, meet up with us virtually with our unglued crew and our unglued makers and that yeah. kind of thing uh, where we had Randy um, lead us through like a half hour, hour long, um, some meditation and stretching. And that has been amazing. And so I think you're up for doing more of oh. that for hire, yes, I <laughs> which forgot about was that. incredible. <laughs> and what, what, how we thought of having you come here today. Mm -hmm. Um, we were like, we needed that. I think other people need this. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that could always be an option too. And we really appreciated that. Yeah. That was so good. <laughs> I'm glad. Yeah. If you have a small group or you have a team, um, that you want to, provide something positive for let's let's meet up on the interwebs and yeah can help you out so absolutely cool awesome well thank you you can hang out here with me for a hot sec and okay. then yeah. <laughs> well, let's do it. we're basically winding down our time together um in this space um we really want to thank you for joining us today um we're not sure what our april it'll be the last friday in april creative mornings will look like it probably won't be in person um, but we will be crafting up some special things, I'm sure. <laughs> um, I really want to thank Livewire for troubleshooting this morning. Um, we had some weird things happen, and we really appreciate that they still made this work, which I think we were all waiting like we needed today. And so we're really, really grateful for the Livewire team for doing this, for doing our coffee cup mod modification. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so they've been incredible. We're in their space right now and they set it up to look like creative mornings. And so it's so cool. <laughs> um, and this has been a, a really great morning. And so the way that you can continue on is Ashley Rick of Tinker is going to join us next. It's about a half hour long um, where she will guide you through some hand lettering basics. And so this is a really cool time if you have a pencil and paper and you can print off the two um, pages that we've been sharing to practice on on the event page and on our um, Facebook Creative Mornings Fargo page to follow along. And so we highly recommend you do that or you come back to our page. This video will be posted and it'll include our time with Ashley Rick as well. 
um, so that you can come back to it if you need to be doing other things. Um, but really try to do something creative. Try the hand lettering out, especially if you haven't done it before. We really think uh, doing those kinds of things in this moment in time will help kind of keep you inspired and keep you staying curious and asking the what ifs. Um, and just trying something new, craft, making-wise, creativity-wise. And so we're very excited to connect with you next month in some way. And we hope you enjoyed our time together and have a wonderful rest of your day. We'll just wave you goodbye. Bye. We love you. <laughs> we'll yes. You guys gonna, are awesome. You're going to be okay. <laughs> we're going to make it. <laughs> Good morning, Creative Mornings group. I hope everybody's having a beautiful Friday. And I hope the sun's coming out today because I really need some. Um, my name is Ashley Rick and I own Tinker in Fargo, North Dakota. I teach a variety of different uh, creative workshops, um, but mainly focus a lot on hand lettering. So today I am here to teach you all how to do some basic hand lettering, some tips, some tricks on how to uh, enhance or maybe modify some of your uh, notes, your grocery list, whatever it is. Um, now's the perfect time to doodle, put a movie on, sit back, relax, enjoy when the kids are napping. Uh, maybe you don't have kids and it's you and your pup. Um, I've tried to hand letter with our dog. He, uh, he's not that good at it yet. He's only a year and a half old. Here's hoping. <laughs> I doubt it. So otherwise, you know, hand letter to each other. Um, now is a great time to send cards. Uh, make sure you sanitize them down. Uh, your, wash your hands really good before you do uh, write your letters, but cards, things like that. Even if you write a note, take a picture of it and text it to somebody. Um, yeah, it's a great time to just reach out and what better excuse than that you are really amazing at hand lettering now and you have all the tricks. So we're going to practice. Um, there should be some printouts for you guys in the, uh, in the notes somewhere. Um, if you don't have them, that's okay. No worries. You can print them later if you want or you can just follow along. So here we go. All right, so we have um, our two different printouts here that you could or could not have printed out, it's up to you. Um, we have uh, capital letters, lowercase letters. Um, I tend to lean more towards lowercase letters when I am hand lettering, but it's completely up to you, whatever feels good. Um, yeah, it's just kinda, it's your practice time. You can do whatever you like. So, what we're going to do because I like lowercase letters, I'm gonna to switch to this one, but the same principle applies for both pages. There are these little dots or stars on each page. I'll zoom in here so you can see them real quick. These little guys. These indicate where you are going to start on each letter. So, um, as we're doing our practice, the biggest thing I can say is hand lettering is all about muscle memory. Um, it took you however years old you are today to write how you currently write. So be patient with yourself. Realize that it is going to take practice and time and be forgiving. It's, it's okay. You have to practice. The number one thing that to keep in mind with hand lettering is you'll see that there's always a thicker line versus a thin line. The biggest trick I can tell you is the down stroke is always the thick line. All right, write that down. The down stroke is always the thick line. And I wanted to write that down because as you can see, I don't have the most amazing handwriting ever. Hand lettering 
and handwriting are completely different, so you need to remember that. You don't have to have beautiful handwriting to be able to hand letter. Keep that in mind. Also, you should have written that down because that's really important. Awesome. So what we're going to do is if you do have your printouts, you can uh, follow along. If you don't, if you didn't print them out, don't worry about it. Um, go ahead and get a piece of paper and just try to follow the strokes as we're doing them. Or maybe you have practice pages already at home and or printed off. Um, yeah, either way, we'll go ahead and get started here. So there's these little stars where we're going to start on each letter. I'm going to do the first row. Actually, we'll just go all the way through real quick. Um, I'm going to do it fast. You guys should slow down. You're going to want to really take your time. Hand lettering is all about patience and being um, detaching yourself, letting yourself calm down for 10 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever you have to practice and be very focused and alert on what is happening right in front of you. Speaking of which, there's coffee right in front of me. Oh, coffee. All right. Oops. So what we're going to do, don't worry about the thick line at the moment. We are just trying to get the basic shape of your letter. So you can go up and down. Here with the B, you're going to start here, loop up, come back down, and then go out from there. I always tell everybody, <laughs> um, you can see how this line here, they all kind of curve under a little bit. They have this little loop to them. I have a an old lady chihuahua, and she's always cold, and she's always shivering, and she always kind of hunches over even though she's got 900 sweaters because we live in Fargo. Uh, but that's how I think about it. She has always got this little, like she's tucking her butt. So you're just gonna go ahead and on these ones, kind of remember, it doesn't go straight down. It's got a curve to it. You can see that. All right, so with the B, you start here. You're gonna go up. Gonna kind of tuck it under a little bit and then come back out. C, D, E, F. Same thing with the F, you're gonna tuck under, come back up and out, and then G. All right, if you notice, we got through our first line here. If you look at C, you'll notice that it has a lot of similarities to a lot of other letters. A, if you look at it, is C and an I combined. So C and I. So a lot of times, if you dissect the letters, you can see that they are the same repetitions. D, for example, would be a C and an L. C, stop, L. E, E is the one that gets a little bit tricky with everybody because in cursive, we have a tendency to go like this for an E, which in hand lettering can look a lot like an I. See? So when you're doing an E, it's really important. You'll notice that they, they have this uh, horizontal line first. So pick up your pencil, draw that horizontal line, and then continue. You don't want to just run through it so you're doing a bunch of E's like this. Awesome. And then G is a combination of a C and a J, which we have down here. 
So as you're doing these, you'll notice that the, a lot of the motions are the same. So if you have a practice book at home, um, a lot of times it's going to just have you practice this motion over and over and over and over. Um, it'll have you practice this one and so on, so on, so on. All they're trying to do are break down the letters. We don't have that uh, type of time schedule here today, but it is fun to know that if you do want to dissect the letters even more and practice on your own, there are so many resources out there and I highly recommend digging into them. They are so much fun. All right, so I'm gonna just continue going through the alphabet here, H. I we did, J we did, K is going to start here, come back up and down. So if you'll notice with K, uh, there are a couple down strokes and same with H. Um, so as you go down here and come back up, it gets thinner because it's an upstroke, but then when you start to loop down, it goes back into being a, a downstroke. L, we already broke that one down. M, so M is a lot of, I break M down into different Vs. So if you go start here, you can add a loop if you want. If you wanna add it a little, a little flourish to it, you certainly can. But it would still be the downstroke here. And then instead of doing this, that we all tend to do in cursive, you don't want to go back up the letter like this. You want to V out from it. So you're gonna come from this point and go out. So instead of going back up your letter and looping, you stop at this point here and branch out there. And then, so we did one V, and now we're gonna do another V, and then an I. If you want to break the letters down that way, otherwise, there's your M. And we could also add that same flourish if you want to. Go down, come back up from that point, and down. One thing to keep in mind is in um, cursive, we were told, you put your pencil down and you don't pick it up till you get to the end. And that's very much not what hand lettering is all about. You oftentimes will stop between each stroke, um, which in one letter can be multiple different strokes. So keep that in mind, you wanna stop. And I, when I was practicing and teaching myself, I would literally pick my pencil up, set it back down in the same spot and continue, just so you can get your brain to separate your regular handwriting from your hand lettering practice. All right, O. P, you can do a couple things with P. You can come down and go straight back up like this, or you can come down, loop it up, and go back out. Either way, it just kind of depends whatever look you're going for, for that specific word or piece. Q. Q, how I break this one apart is you have a C, and then you have the back part of an, the bottom part of an F. So this bottom part. So it's kind of the, a C into an F. R, up, this whole thing is your downstroke, and then you come back up. And you can bring it down if you want, so there's a little bit more of a line that connects to your letter before. That's not a problem. One thing to pay attention to with the R's is in cursive, oftentimes we will do this, where we bring this little slope up here, and you don't want to do that. Think of it more as a skiing hill, a slope, so you're gonna go up, 
and down instead of up, up, down. Hopefully that makes sense out there. All right, so don't do the slope up. Perfect. Uh, S, let's start here. Something to keep in mind with the S is you can do it a couple different ways. Um, you can do just a simple S here. It doesn't connect to the letter before. Um, and then connect it to your uh, additional letters. Or if you want, if you're going for a different, more sleek look, you can kind of go here. And then this would be your downstroke. So it just kind of depends if you're looking for more of a cursive style S or um, not. Whatever your piece uh, needs. T, down stroke here, come up, and then we'll just cross it. U, how I remembered U is it's just two eyes together. So you're just going to make one eye and then come back up here and make another eye. V, we have an eye and then a little flourish. W, I, I, and then a loop. X, you're going to start here and then here. So X would have two starting points as well, technically, and so would Y. Y is going to be an I and a J. And then Z is just over here being rogue AF and doing its thing. So Z is just, you know, that's unique. Awesome. So we got through our whole alphabet. I'm going to go ahead and bring a piece of paper over here. You can use um, just regular computer paper. You can use, I really like, I have graph paper here. Um, I really like graph paper as well. You can use line paper. It's completely up to you, uh, whatever you prefer. I like the, the yellow notepads because um, it's kind of, uh, it's nice because with these printouts you can see through it and you still have lines. But if you don't want the lines and you just want the plain computer paper, you can go ahead and throw that over it too. Can you see that through? There we go. So you would go ahead, put your sheet, under here and we're going to just you could continue to practice and so on if you wanted to for time's sake i am going to we're going to pick one word and we are going to just practice that word and because it's creative mornings um and a lot of us thrive off of coffee especially uh, in the world we're living in now, um, we're gonna do the word coffee. So cheers, friends. And I hope your coffee is amazing this morning. So what you're gonna do is we'll pick a line, right? So we'll just say we're gonna do our word here. So you can, if you would like, take your letters I'm going to rip that off because I can't get it up there. there. Oh. My dog is just snoring away in the background, so I don't know if you can hear her, but it is hilarious. She is just loving life right now. All right, so we'll get through this here. With the F connecting the Fs, goodness gracious. Um, you're going to go ahead and you will start this loop here. We'll go right into your next F. And then we got two E's.
All right, so we have our letters. I'm gonna set this one over here. Um, now we're gonna go ahead and add in that thick line. So the thick line is the downstroke, which we have our little cheat sheet here to tell us if we forget. Um, you can put the thick line on either side of the letter. There's not a right or wrong. It's however your page feels or your word feels, which I'll explain here. So with coffee, I'm gonna kick it out here to the left. And then my O, I'm gonna do to the left because then I'm gonna connect that guy. F, bring it out to the left here. Same here. E, and E. If I had done a word, say, here, I'll do it again. Where this is, gets a little bit tight right there, you could make that loop a little bit bigger here. Bring it on the inside and bring this one on the outside. So it doesn't really matter where the line goes as long as it just helps your word feel balanced. As you're doing this thick line, I don't want, here, we'll just do, I'm gonna do a short word. So as you're adding in that thick line, don't do this. Don't add it like that. Because a lot of times it'll be uneven. If you take your pencil, draw the line, and then fill it in, you get a much more even line and your whole word will flow a little bit more smoothly. Awesome. You can use pencil, which is what we started with today. You can use pen, same thing. Oh, if your pen doesn't run out. and then add in your lines. You can add Sharpie. And another fun one if you're home with the kids um, or maybe you just have crayons because you're like us and you really like colorful things um, you can use crayons uh, same same and then go through and add your thick line. It's really fun to practice at Rhombus, guys, if you guys are going, um, once they open back up and they have their tables covered with paper and they give you crayons and it's really fun to practice your hand lettering on their, on their tables, on the paper on their tables. Yeah, so the biggest thing is going to be trace, 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 trace. And then it, once you start feeling more comfortable with it, go ahead and set your page next to it and try to copy the letters from the page.
Und so. Once you start doing that, you'll notice that you'll start feeling the strokes. Your, your, your brain will start to remember, your hands will start to remember, and you'll be able to, to work on those letters that are a little more frustrating. For me, I had a hard, a hard time with O's, R, stuff like that. Um, and then finally one day I was practicing and practicing and I did an O that I really loved and like literally exclaimed, woohoo, uh, to myself because I was the only one home. Um, but I got really excited because you had, I practiced, practiced, practiced this letter and it finally happened and I was finally able to, to get it to look how I wanted to. And um, that was a really great moment. So keep practicing, I promise they will come. If you uh, really wanna practice different fonts, you should go to defont.com or a thousand and one free fonts.com. Um, you can download different fonts for free. They have a handwritten uh, font section. So it's kind of nice, you can look at different handwriting ones. This font here is called Bromello. Um, I wanted to give you guys a font that was easily accessible. So if you want to print the pages and you don't have the printouts, um, you can still have access to this font. Um, I believe I got it from DeFont. Their fonts are free as long as you're using them for personal use. If you do decide to use some of their fonts for commercial use, there is a donation button that you can donate to the artist who designed that font. And uh, you should because they worked really hard and they make beautiful things. Um, and it's an important time to support, support people in our communities right now. Um, if you have any questions, please, please, please let me know. Um, on Facebook. You can go to Tinker Creates. Oops. And on Instagram. And just go ahead and shoot me a message if you have questions or uh, if you if you do keep practicing and you want to share your stuff I would love to see it. I would love to see what you've come up with um, and I have a lot of other practice stuff too if, if it's something you want to dive deeper into um, I can get you more practice pages and more things to look at um, Awesome, thank you guys so much for coming and practicing with me. Um, I would love to help out more. If you have any questions, um, if, like I said, if you have any questions, shoot me a message. Um, I do, otherwise, I would love to see what you're making and what you practice. But I hope everybody has a beautiful Friday and weekend. And just remember, be kind, be patient, and uh, don't forget to tell your loved ones you love them. Thanks, guys.